All right. First video on interactive stories. This is going to be about setting up several backgrounds and being able to switch those backgrounds depending on where Scratch goes. So I think I'm going to go with three backgrounds and that gives you an idea how those transitions should work. So let's begin. Okay, first I am going to choose three backgrounds. Right now I have a nothing background, but let's just make three backdrops. That's lame to have a back. So it's the Arctic and we're going to go to play baseball and then we're going to go to um, a bedroom. Sure. Okay, so my backdrops, I'm going to get rid of this one. So one right here. So let's say Scratch is going to start in his bedroom. Okay, this is going to be my, my first location. And then he has two options to go to. And I'm going to put two arrows on the screen, whether he wants to go to the Arctic or the other one, baseball. So to make those, I'm going to have to actually use sprites. So I can do this a few different ways. So I want to make this so that if he goes to the left, he's going to go to baseball. If he goes to right, he'll go to the other one. One way I can do this is by making sprites that are just those arrows and if he touches them. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to add new sprites. So I'm going to choose a sprite. They have arrow sprites in here. So if you want to use, this will be the like the left arrow. So in this way, actually, you can just duplicate that sprite. We'll have the arrow two. And with arrow two, we can actually change the costume of the arrow to point right. Okay. So scratch can go one way or the other. Just kind of leaving this pretty basic for now, right? So here's how this works. When he touches this one, I wanted to switch scenes. So first thing I got to do, like, let's just break this down. I got to let Scratch move somehow, right? So let's put some motion in. Well, let's put some events. What should happen when he starts? When you start this, I want Scratch to be at a certain... Well, let's not worry about the positions. So when you start, I'm going to have some kind of loop. You know, actually, I don't even need to do it this way. Scratch is going to move based off of his position. So whenever... Whenever a certain, I can make this, how do I want to do my movements? One way I can do them is whenever a certain key is pressed, he moved. So maybe whenever the A button is pressed, Scratch is going to move to the left. So he's going to move to the left and steps. So right now, oops, I'm in the arrow. That's not what I want. He and Scratch. So events, when I press the A button, I'm in Scratch and then I can have him move negative 10 steps. This might be one way to do this. So, okay, every time I hit A, he's going to go backwards, okay? Maybe he chooses, he can choose the arrows, right? And let's say I want to make another one of these. I'm going to duplicate. When he chooses D, hit D. I want to go to the right. So A and D move back and forth. I want him to be able to touch one of these arrows. Now, when Scratch touches one of those arrows, I want him to switch to a different scene. So let's say when he touches this left arrow, I want the scene to switch to um, uh, whatever, baseball. I'm going to switch to baseball. So how do I do this? And this is, a, if I want to go into, I believe it's going to be events. Now, I can do this when I want to say when it touches something. When the, so I want to say, not when I, when I do this, I'm going to have to be controls. So I have to sense when Scratch touches the edge right here. Remember back in sensing, we did this. Actually, I'm going to have to do it in Scratch itself. Actually, can I do this when this sprite is click, when the backdrop switches to? No, I can't do that. So sensing. How do I detect when it touches this? Well, I can do this sensing thing when Scratch touches. This is arrow two right here. Okay, So I can say when Scratch touches arrow two, do something. But how do I set up that something? All right, so I'm going to actually have a loop that's happening. So when, let's say when I click, I'm going to have this control. I'm just going to keep this. I want it just to repeat this forever. I think I can do it this way. I have a forever loop. And in this forever loop, I'm going to say, if it's touching arrow two, then I want him to switch scenes right here. So I want to say, I want the backdrop to switch. So I'm going to go to looks and I can say switch, change the uh, backdrop. 
One way I can do this is I can switch the backdrop to baseball. All right, so watch what happens. So now I'm going to hit play. When it hits that, switch to baseball. So that, that made this transition work. And now I can have another switch right here. I want it, when he hits that arrow, I want it to switch to the other one. So what I can do, stop this right now. I'm going to duplicate this. And if he's touching the other arrow, I want to switch to maybe uh, Arctic, right? Okay. So now let's hit play again. I hit that arrow, I go to Arctic. I hit this arrow, I go to baseball. Okay, great. But the problem is, you're like, wait a minute, how do you get back to the bedroom? So every time I hit the green flag, I wanted to like start off in the bedroom, right? So I got to take this code right here and add those kind of features. I'm actually going to switch. So one thing you can do is you can do this like, we can do it as part of this loop. Let's try it this way. If you wanted to, you can have like a separate control that, that like resets the background if you want to, but whatever. When, when this is clicked, I want it to switch to the bedroom too. So every time it restarts there. So great, now I'm at the bedroom. I can go back there and go here. Bedroom, cool. What if I do this? So one other problem you might have is like, well, wait, I want Scratch to reset every time, right? I want him to be back in the center. Cause like if he's over here, and I stop and go, that doesn't work. So another thing you're gonna need to do is when you click, click that green flag, you need to reset all of your sprites. So maybe I set, I want to set scratch here. I'm collect, selected scratch. I want him to go to a certain position. And maybe this is the center position. So notice it's nine, negative 57. You can just drag, when he's in the right spot, drag this go to X, Y, right there. So there, he's in bedroom, he's in baseball. I hit stop and I hit play, he goes back to the center. And I can even have him say something if I want to. Maybe I want him to say, which, where should I go? Maybe he says this. Maybe he says this for, for one second. That block. Then he's going to, oh. OK, so one thing about that. I'm going to do a delay in there. I probably want him to go to at the start. And actually, I probably want. So I don't know if you want to put that delay in there. You can switch back and forth. Now, other things in here, maybe I don't want these arrows. It's kind of weird. Like, I'd like him to be able to go back. Or I'd like the arrows to go away after they switch to the scenes. Right? Or I should be able to go back to the bedroom. So, well, okay, so the first question is maybe I, maybe I want it to switch, I want it to remove the arrows when it goes away. So now that I know when, when these backdrops change, so I can, I can add some events in here. So when, maybe when the background switches to Arctic, I want, so I'm in backdrops right here. Actually, can I do that in Scratch too? I can, oh, I can make that happen in Scratch too, itself. So maybe when the background switches to Arctic, I don't need my background scenes to do anything. Maybe I'll delete that. Maybe I need Scratch to say something. So I'm going to have him say, uh, looks. I mean, have him say, I went to the Arctic. So, and he goes here, and he goes, I went to the Arctic. Great. Cool. Done. All right, um, other things that you might want to have when you switch to these scenes, maybe you want to hide these arrows right here. So maybe maybe this arrow is no longer there when it, he switches, right? So I'm going to have this event under this arrow. When the backdrop switches to Arctic, I can say looks and say hide this, right? So I can hide that arrow. I don't want to see it anymore. Or I don't want to see any of these arrows anymore, maybe. Well, the problem is, okay, so I turned it off. But when you hit the green flag, now it stays off. So if you add these things for hide and remove, remember that what's a great thing is in these arrows, when you hit the green flag and you reset, make sure you show them again right here. 
because it'll, it'll save the state every time you run it. Now, if I stop and I reset, you'll see it again. I'm going to do the same idea over here. So controls when I hit the green flag. Then when I switch the scene to Arctic, I want it to show when I hit the green flag. I want it to hide after I make those choices. So it goes over here. I went to the Arctic. My story is done. Maybe you have different arrows or whatever in the Arctic. Now, I would do the same thing. Now, another thing when he goes to the Arctic, maybe you don't want Scratch to be right here. Maybe you want him to recenter back in the middle. So I might do, when I switch the Arctic right here, I might have him go back to this position and say, oh, go to this position right here. Now what? Watch what happens. He goes back to the center. That's kind of basics of movement. This is some choices as an interactive story, story just to change scenes. And that's it for this video.